failure in your own life is about not trying. Everybody was like, oh, you're so lucky, your work's so good. You know, it's actually not, I did that. Lots of people that have their dream right now, whether it's athletic, whether it's CrossFit, and you've got a job and you feel like that job's holding you back, it's not true. It's not true. Anything you want to do, doesn't matter how slow it takes or how long you take to get there, just have that attitude and the mindset of we're going to get to the end and then we've learned. Gone, can Holly Archer get second? Archer gets the silver. From an overachiever as an athlete, you're never done. I've got a lot of work to do um, physically still. You run a PB, right, you want to go run quicker. One thing I'm not going to do is I'm not going to not finish. I will crawl if I have to. I questioned everything and that's when I realised how brutal and harsh the sport is because you're judged on yourself. You know, actually failing is not even trying. So at least I tried. At least I rolled the dice and signed with Under Armour. At least I went out with that team and learned. She said it was always a dream since a young girl to come and represent Great Britain. Well, now she's actually won a medal for Great Britain. At the end of the day, I tried to do every single one and I tried. Holly, welcome to season three of the Open Up podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. I feel like every time I've like grabbed you and been like, Holly, like we're going to do this, like let's chat. And you're like, Amira, are you ready for me? Like, <laughs> Are you actually ready for what we're going to get into? I mean, when you put it in my calendar for a month's notice, I was like, I know this is going to be a big one. So <laughs> <laughs> normally people are like, are you free next week? So the fact that this has been a, a five week build, four week build up, I'm excited to see what we can uh, dive into. But no, I'm really excited to be here and I appreciate you having me. Now, usually I get straight into it. We go for the hard questions first, but I mean, something's happened that I just can't ignore. <laughs> You've come back from Copenhagen. Guys, for anybody that's like doesn't quite yet know Holly, we're gonna get into it. You're gonna understand like what she does, how she's got there. But just to kind of sum it up right now, you ran a PB, mm -hmm. running a half marathon, mm -hmm. and you had just come back from Ibiza. And um, just bear in mind, half marathon is not even a distance. So I want to say congrats. Can you just tell <laughs> us how you did it? Yeah, I think this question was probably gonna be more understandable at the end of the podcast when you get <laughs> to know me. But basically, um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a, a professional runner, we'll, which we'll get into. So a PB is a big deal at any on any stage at, of the game when you, you, you're at my age, um, because we're constantly running at those top t peak areas in our life. But basically, I got offered to run for G for England last minute. Um, I literally had 10 days notice. They Somebody dropped out with COVID. Um, I was next representative on the list. Um, but unfortunately, I had a holiday booked to Ibiza. <laughs> so what do I do? Um, so yeah, I decided to go to Ibiza, live it out and just think, you know, just handle it. Tie your hair back, have a coffee and handle it. And Copenhagen was the attitude. Um, and it worked out brilliantly. <laughs> so I, uh, yeah, run 72.47. Um, for those that work in Ks, that's I think 3.27 per kilometre for, for 22 kilometres. For those in miles, it's 5.30 per mile for 13 miles. So <laughs> Casually. Yeah, was, you yeah. just casually, like, my brain can't even get my head around the pace. And when you're telling me it, I'm like, yeah, okay, I get how fast that is. I'm like, oh, I get how far away I am from it. <laughs> yeah, I, I honestly did not expect to, to run like that after a, I, I called it a five-day bender because that's pretty much what it was. <laughs> like, cause as an athlete, we don't get time. We don't get an opportunity yeah. to, to have fun. And so I wasn't going to pass pass it up I just thought you know I'm, I'm gonna just do both which is not some people may have frowned upon that and mm. you know it's you know you're representing England like why would you go and do that but at the same time the circumstances was I select was selected such late in the game that I couldn't train for it anyway regardless um, and you know I wanted to prove to myself that out of any environment that you throw at yourself what you can handle mentally it's a good t task and a test to see what you can do actually in the, with the worst preparation possible so my next race I know is going to be way better <laughs> so I love that we've actually ended up starting here because for me there's so much context right and jokingly I would have said to you okay everybody listening I don't actually recommend that you go out and do it however I think like you said that let's just park for a second the fact whether it's frowned on upon or not right yeah, yeah. you are responsible for you and yes you could be representing the country yeah. however 
It's also about honoring yourself. And I talk about this a lot, I guess, with my clients. If people have listened from the beginning, I mean, authenticity is such a big part of what I do. But also the flip side of it, and it's, I feel like this juggling act, right? So, okay, fine. Was it ideal conditions? No. The way you reframed it and look at, looked at it was like, actually, let me mentally see what I can actually do. And I think there's a difference, and I'm speaking from experience here, right? And not even just in the context of running, but in terms of, I guess I put myself in situations and set myself up for goals and not prepare, but it would come from a space of, I was so scared of like my own potential that I'd constantly be holding back. Mm -hmm. So that's the angle I was coming from. But for you to flip it and say, actually, all right, it is what it is. I don't have time off. So I'm actually really going to go and enjoy my holiday. Mm -hmm. Let's see what I am capable of. And I think that's like a really different level of resilience. Yeah. I mean, as well as, as, with anybody, with you as well, when you're setting up for something really important, not necessarily running or training, mm. but for work, you have a routine. You know, yeah. you write a list, you have this, you need to be there 15 minutes before, whatever it is, it's the same with running, right? You know, I have a week of running, early nights, ice baths, um, you know, foam rolling, you know, all of this takes place weeks before a big race. Mm. And I just threw it all out the window and just went and got, you know, whatever you want, you know, just took, normal routine went yeah. and I just thought for once in my life I'm going to do everything opposite because I had no pressure with this race I was entered last minute I was actually I saw it as I was helping the team out because nice. you know, if without me they wouldn't have had a full team um, and I just thought you know what you haven't had time to train for this because normally to train for a half marathon you need six weeks like preparing for a big you know, in, in the work world, if you've got a, you know, a big presentation, you, you take six weeks and mm. if somebody asks you to do it with three days, it's like, this is what we've got, you know, sling together what you can do and see how successful you can be. Um, so yeah, I just did everything with the, with the worst preparation and had the mindset of, you know, my next time I do this, I'm going to throw all my preparation at it and then we're really going to rumble with it. So it's going to be, it was just one of those things that, you know, I was so proud of myself to get on the start line because only me and my best mate really know how bad the preparation <laughs> was. <laughs> like, the, the sleep was more of the issue than the alcohol, I think. But it was more, she was just proud the, of your resilience and your mental mm. capacity to get on a start line with, with other people and, and still run, you know. I think that marath half marathon is 12th in, in the country this year. But as a 1,500-meter runner, I think that's, that's pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, no, I'm really happy with how it went and... I just felt like it was a big W with, you know, a big win regardless of the, yeah. the year I'd had. So I'm, I know we'll probably talk about that in a bit, but it's not been the best year. Mm -hmm. So to finish like that was actually like the best way I could finish this year, I think. Like I feel so much refreshed going into next year and so much more to give. Oh, I just find that alone like inspiring. One, I was going to say, I'm not going to get you to disclose, <laughs> you know, how bad the extent of IV4 was. You keep that between you and your best friend. <laughs> Nobody needs it. You don't need I'm to just talking about that. the preparation. Yeah. <laughs> There's no sleep. <laughs> <laughs> but also, I think it's really good actually to hear you say, yeah, it was a big win and I'm actually, I'm going to take that and I'm going to celebrate that about myself. And yeah. I know it's one thing that I see. I always say to my clients, if they're listening, they're going to be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She always says this. But most of, my, not most, every single one of my clients, every single person I work with in a corporate environment on a one-to-one -one basis is an overachiever. Mm -hmm. Like that's the common thread, right? Regardless of what they're working on, where it's like manifesting in their life in a negative way, is that overachieving? And you're speaking to someone that's constantly like keeping it in check. So it, I think you just being able to sit here and say it out loud, like, I'm proud. I'm going to take that win. And actually, because I'm really, really, one, exactly as your best friend said, to get on the line. But I see with my clients as well that there's such a reluctance to actually celebrate yourself. Mm -hmm. And I sometimes think it's so underestimated. Yeah. And I mean, on paper, right, like, if I'd had preparation as an athlete, we are so competitive. So yeah. um, I'm always hard on myself. I've been hard on myself this whole year, you know. Um, so you know, we strive for every single second in a race, like minus half a second is a PB, it's a win. Mm. S but this half marathon on paper f to anyone professional, it's not very good. But with me and my preparation and the way everything else going on, it was extremely good for me. So I know I've got room to, to grow so much in that, that area of, of the sport. Um, so that's why I'm taking it as a win. But as an overachiever in the work world, mm. oh, 
we, I've not even scratched the surface in terms of the time. <laughs> it's not good. Um, seventy-two yeah. forty-seven is my me at my at my you know floor. Mm. But we got the ceiling to go, so like it's just the start. So I'm really excited for that, and that's how I'm looking at it. Like you know, I've got five, six, seven more years in the you know in the sport. So what I can do with better preparation and actually training for it is ex- is it's excited me and it's fueled me. Although I know as a competitive overachiever, as we all are in this industry or anybody that wants to be the best at something, mm. it's, it's never enough. And you're right. Sometimes we just take a step back and just go, actually, given the circumstances of everything going on, this is where I am. This is what I've done. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with it. And, you know, I think I, I made a few people laugh. Um, I made a few people giggle. I made a few people smile. Um, you know, I did an Instagram post afterwards and it kind of went, you know, a bit viral because it was just like, you was like, yes, I had a booze a weekend and mm. yes, I still got the job done. And that was down to, you know, my tenacity and that was down to my attitude and it was down to my like, yeah, I can do this. Like, regardless, I'm going to get on. The One thing I'm not going to do is I'm not going to not finish. So yeah. I will crawl if I have to. But it was more about, you know, I set this goal up for myself. I went out, I had fun, but I also got the job done. Um, and that's down to your mindset and, you know, telling yourself, regardless of what happens, let's just finish, you know? Mm. And that's such a good, you know, mindset of going into the next year and whatever you do, you know, don't whatever you've got planned for yourself, just finish it, you know? Not talking like running world, but anything you want to do, doesn't matter how slow it takes or how long you take to get there, just have that attitude and the mindset of we're going to get to the end and then we've learned, you know, then we can rebuild. I think, I mean, (laughs) (laughs) so much I want to pick up and my brain is like a million miles an hour. I'm like, wait, sorry, I told you. (laughs) You do not (laughs) apologise. This is what I'm I'm here for these conversations. Don't ever apologise. But there's quite a few things I actually want to kind of like pick out and go back to. The one thing that you kind of left us with that is it took me way longer than I would love to admit to actually learn is doing it and getting it done. Mm-hmm. And I know that there's like, you know, a famous phrase like done is better than perfect. Right. Mm-hmm. But when you fit into an overachiever category and like label, then actually the fear of it being like your best is actually sometimes a thing that you're constantly striving for that you don't allow yourself that space. And mm-hmm. I think you've just illustrated and I know I love that you did it through humor on the post and I think as well that's why though it was a really viral post because so many people could relate and you were being you but also it's like I talk about duality a lot right so it's the fact that okay yes you had time off also let's also give that context as an athlete doesn't really happen that often or it's very limited um because like your whole well-being is a huge part of what you do for a profession but you embraced both and that you managed to get both done. So I think that's one part of it. And the other part is, yes, you were so tenacious. We're going to get into your mindset, <laughs> right? Because mindsets of athletes, I'm all here for it. And I'm like, okay, team, let's break this down, okay? Like, let's actually see what really works for you. But just getting it done and allowing yourself, like you said, oh my God, this is me at my worst, like time-wise. Yeah. I've got the ceiling. I've got so far to go. Yeah. But uh, the way that's fueled you and even like listening to you in the language you use. I mean, you're talking to me, so I'm always going to pick up on your language. Like you can't get away with it. (laughs) But I really think it's such a beautiful reminder for so many of us to say, actually, you know, you have to get stuff done. You have to start. And exactly as you said, you learn. And I think when you were talking, because we probably talked about this off like off camera as well. um, I was just thinking when you asked about the podcast, it's coming up to the year anniversary. I guess while we, when when this launches, we'll almost be at a year. This isn't what the podcast looked like a year ago. No, like, right. I have to take a moment to be like, oh, this it's is my win. Yeah, it's evolving. It's mm. changing. It's growing, you know. And like you said, uh, just to pick up on what you said, you said, you know, overachievers, like we, we want to get things done. But from an overachiever as an athlete, you're never done. Yeah. You're, it's never, you're never done. Right, we are, like you run a PB, right? You want to go run quicker. Like, yeah. oh, I didn't do this, this, and this with the podcast. Oh, I, I could have done this, this, and this. Like, you're never done um, as an overachiever, which is exciting, but it's also restricting because we never take that breath to just go. Actually, look what I've done, and that's mm. what I'm trying to encourage myself to do more. Because you know, last year I had a phenomenal year, and this year it's been the worst, like athletic wise. And actually, I've got to take my 
take myself away from it and go five years ago I never imagined any of this so you know you've got to enjoy as cliche as it sounds you really have to enjoy the journey and that's why I've had fun with it because I'm like it's not been perfect at the moment Mm. it's been a bumpy ride but I'm going to make the most out of what you know I have planned holiday half marathon selection let's just have fun with it and see you know how much fun I can have with it and play around with it before we get so serious and hung up on you know, being the best, um, yes. because being the best is hard. You have to be very isolated, <coughs> very focused, very driven. Um, and sometimes, you know, you, you forget to love and live life, you know, because you're so set on your restricted rules that you have laid out for yourself um, in order to be successful. And I know you're probably guilty of this, but, you know, every week it's like I need to do X, Y and Z. Otherwise I failed this week. It's the same with running, right? We get up, we need to do this amount of miles. You need to drink this amount of water, have your vitamins, eat healthy, you know, get in the ice bath, you know, and then you need to do that for eight weeks. And if you haven't done it, then, but actually I've just kind of had fun, done both um, by just letting myself relax and then just take the pressure off. And I've lived life, enjoyed it. Um, And yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with it, this going into next year, so... One thing I'm going to (laughs) say when you're like, Amira, you can probably relate. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for a really long time, my productivity was intrinsically linked to my worth. Mm. And that's taken like a hell of a lot of work to, I'm not even going to say undo. I'm so careful as well with language when I talk to my clients as well, because people will often come to me and be like, oh, Amira, like, I want to fix this. I need to understand this so I can get rid of this. And I'm like, okay, let's pause. And exactly as you said, when you're constantly looking at the next thing, it's about how can you do that and also pause and be grateful for right now. Yeah. So again, going back to both, right? But when we are so focused and tunnel vin- visions, which I also believe is a really crucial ingredient to be, to be the best at whatever it is you want to be. Yeah. But that balance, and I use the word balance so lightly because it's like, what does balance look like? For you so like what's important to you what are your values and I think as you said as an athlete like you can never be done because it's constantly what's the next thing and I have a client who's an ex-athlete and we've had a very similar conversation and they refused to celebrate any type of win and we really had to kind of like unpick that to understand like okay where's the benefit in it when you are how can you still keep striving but also celebrate like how far you've come and I think Mm -hmm. I know when you said, oh, it's cliche about enjoy the journey, but definitely I think from the time I've started the business, I've had to stop and be like, wait, you're exactly where you always wanted to be. Like stop and enjoy and smile. And I said this to you at the beginning, I was like, all right, I forget, I'm really serious, but like let's laugh and also enjoy this. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's like the the, the biggest thing as well is like if you, you step away from it and think, actually it's not always about you know the sport or the business Mm -hmm. like it's about the people you meet on the way like think about all the people you've met all the things you've learned through the struggle even though it's been tough like you know I wouldn't take any of it away so you know sometimes when things aren't going well I lean on other people more and I'm proud that I do that I'm the first person to say hey I need help like things aren't going with running what else can I do and the amount of people that like support you and want to help you get you on the right direction is is just like eye-opening to like what this world can be Mm. so yeah like it's really important as well like the journey the people um yeah I've I've met I mean I wouldn't be here right (laughs) I was thinking the exact same (laughs) thing and I was like your podcast it wasn't for like you know me being in sport and wanted to come down to help track life London then you know um I wouldn't be here it's, yeah, a, it's a all about the journey right it's not if I, if I was so f- ultra focused on pbs and going to bed early and stuff then I wouldn't have been doing those things yeah you know? um so sometimes I've got to think actually keep pushing to be the person you are even though the the intrinsic thing of being the best at running is is still there yes. it's almost about as well make sure you nurture all the other avenues and because that's my deep core is a, is a p- people person it's a business girl it's um in the enjoyment of the world and seeing other people succeed so don't lose sight of that because otherwise your intrinsic thing of being really good at your sport is just not going to be worth anything it's you know i'd rather 
you know, die in my late 80, 90s thinking, actually, I met all these incredible people. I did all these incredible mm. things rather than just having a gold medal and, and not having any memories to go with it other than, you know, early bedtimes and, and salads. So <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely, like, really truly, I think that's something beautiful for all of us to take away with and kind of ground ourselves in as well. And I know that you've alluded to like this year being a really tough, hard year mm -hmm. before we actually get into it. Yeah. I want you to kind of take us back to five years ago as an example, right? Yeah. Where all, everything you are doing now and you are living and you are breathing felt like either it's never going to happen or is a really distant dream. Mm. Because one, you've turned pro at 27. So for people that are not familiar with athletics, that is not the typical age, no. <laughs> right? So I want you to give us a bit of insight in terms of like, why five years ago did this feel like a really distant dream? And I guess your life before athletics because yeah. it didn't always look like this. No, um, right, buckle up. <laughs> <laughs> we are so ready. Um, well, I think, you know, as a, I'm gonna take it back to when I was 18, so 10 years mm. ago, just because as a kid, everybody went to uni in the UK. I always want to go to the US. Um, why? Because it was free if I could get a scholarship. So amazing. So I really wanted to strive for that full ride, leave home, leave my family, go to another country. I've always wanted to push and challenge myself, which looking back, I guess that's what I was trying to do. At the time, I didn't know that. I just wanted to go and do the American scholarship dream. So I did five years in the US, in Dallas, Texas. Um, so from when I was 18 to 23. Um, was on a cross country team, track team, traveled around, had a great, like just learn to do life on my own, you know, the, yeah. you know, learn new people, new culture, new, you know, put yourself out there, which is a hard thing to do at the time. But I'm so grateful I did it because it makes you the more of the struggle younger, it makes you more durable later. Um, I was never phenomenal in college. Like I didn't make all okay. the big teams, you know, I didn't make the big finals. I didn't even, so the the big final over there is called the NCAAs. I never made the final. Okay. I was just mediocre, but good enough to get a scholarship, right? S okay. But I got my education put away. And, you know, my dad was always like, you know, you're going to a ath ath academic rather than athletic school. Mm. So I was like, right, that's fine. Um, had a lovely time, met great people, came home, got a job. Um, so I started working in the pharmaceutical industry in Cambridge, which is my hometown. Um, so from 24 to 27, that's where I was based. So I was just working, loving it, um, love the grind, love getting up, getting my <laughs> coffee, you know, writing my lists, um, you know, having my business meeting, wearing my Louboutins, <laughs> like that's, that's me, right? I loved it. Um, but I still found myself every single lunch break going for a run. I still found myself after work going, joining the, the club for hard track sessions. I still found myself not being done with the running. Um, mm. Did I believe I'd turn pro? No, um, but I was dating a guy that was pro and I got to see his life and how he was living it and I still wanted that for myself. Okay. And I thought if he can do it, like maybe I can do it and work full time. Although it's practically impossible because of the hours and the travel and the recovery side, which was the hold back. Um, so I always just kept it in my heart of, of training and, and just kind of like, you know, seeing how far I could push myself. It wasn't about making pro then when I was 24, 25. It was about getting to your best and seeing where you can go with it because I still felt inside like I hadn't touched the surface with it. Um, and then, yeah, COVID hit. And my I went into the talk to my CEO and I said, look, I'm not done with this running and things started picking up with my training. I started okay. getting fitter. I started feeling like, you know, I'm going to have a breakthrough here. You just know when things are going well. And I said, what What would, would you mind sponsoring me and, you know, paying for like travel to go to an altitude camp? And at first he was like, mm, no, because I, oh, I said, look, I'll work abroad. I'll do yeah. different time zone. This was right before COVID. Um, and he was like, well, well, talk to your manager, talk to your manager. So I sat down with my manager and she was brilliant. She was absolutely brilliant. She And she made me write out, you know, when I'm, what hours I'm going to work. So it's 5 a.m. US time to this time. And then, then I'll have the work on her desk by the morning. So I sat down and talked to her about it. And she said, right, how much money do you need? And we worked out flights and accommodation and rental car. And I said, right, I need, I need five grand per month, really, that I do an altitude camp. Um, 
and yeah, that they sponsored me, and uh, everybody was like, "Oh, you're so lucky. Your work's so good." You know, it's actually no, I did that. Like, I yes. how many people would sit in front of their CEO and ask that, and have, you know, excuse, excuse my language, but have the balls, yeah. like, you know, like it, my CEO turned around to me and go, "What the? What's the likelihood that you're going to make it?" And like, what mm. kind of question is that? Like, you have to stand, there, you have to stand there and go, "Yeah, I'm going to make it." Um, and it's that I deep know. level belief, like regardless of if it's actually real at that point, yeah. if you can't back yourself, right. how can you expect somebody else to? Exactly. And at that point I had no medal, I had no I had no national title. It was just me saying, Hey, I, I anyone can go, I I, I wanna be, you know, a boxer, I wanna be <laughs> a show jumper, I, I have horses, like yeah. you know, so but they kind of knew something because they gave me that freedom and they, they did do it. And that January, it was January 2020, before COVID, I okay. won my first ever after doing a camp uh, national title in the 1500, so indoors, and then that's when I was like, okay, I've done it, like, I, I did it for the, like, the I relaxed, you know, mm. um, and then COVID hit, and again, I asked again, I was like, I'm going to go and work remotely, like, everyone's remote now, Yeah. I continue to do so, um, building up, just running with elites, putting myself in the mindset of elites that's so important when you're in a position where you're working and just at a local track it's very very different to put yourself in the top level mindset it's their how they train how they think how they sleep what they prioritize like those things are going to change you so I put myself in that environment for as long as possible until I started to understand what it takes mm. um and so yeah then I slowly kind of got better and stronger and then it was uh january of 2021 so a year on um i you know was out in uh you know the training camp and things were going really really well i was in really good shape and i managed full-time work i was still full-time work working 60 50 hours a week um so this is really like only 18 months ago yeah maybe a little bit over we're not yeah. talking a long time no, ago no and it's like it what's so cool about it is it's, it's lots of people that have their dream right now it, whether it's athletic whether it's crossfit what we, and you've got a job and you feel like that job's holding you back it's not true it's not true like you can do things you just gotta what i did was i said I s my CEO said, why do you want to do this? And I said, well, look what all of the people are doing that are winning. They're at altitude camp. They're mm. doing this. They're training here. They're doing this race. So you've got to look at what the people that are winning at your whatever it is at the moment, you've got to write down what are they doing? Where are they? Like 80% of the time, what are they doing? Mm. Are they in an office building working like 20 hours a day? Like uh, what are they doing? Do it. Go and do it. And if you can't figure out how or figure out how you can do it 50% of the time or start small, yeah. which is what I did. I figured out they were at altitude camps. I figured out they were with big pro groups and, and they were get, you know, working towards a, a specific race. Mm. And I did that for myself. Um, and I asked my CEO, like, this is what I need to do it. Can I do both? Um, so yeah, it all snowballed when I won a medal very unexpectedly, um, Poland in March of 2021. Why was, was it unexpected? Because if you look at the field and even the commentator, like Steve Cram, <laughs> very well known, <laughs> was just like, you know, she's got a work cut out here. Everyone is a pro in Europe. Like I was racing the top three girls in every country in Europe. So only three girls from the UK got selected. Um, Great Britain. I was one of them. And even that was touch and go. People were like, well, I've never represented GB before. So mm. it's the first time I've represented GB. Um, I'm the only unprofessional. Like I, yep. I was a full time you know, everyone else is sponsored by Nike or Adidas or they've done this game for a while. I'm 27. At, yeah. at the time, I was 27. So, you know, I was kind of like, I was not young. When you're young and in it, you're naive and you've got nothing to lose. When Definitely. you're 27, like, you've got a bit more pressure because, you know, you, you first of all, you're racing maybe younger, a younger crop, and you have kind of like, well, if you're going to do it, make it worth your time, you know? Yeah. Um, so... I was racing in the heat and I remember, you know, thinking like every single person in this race has got some sort of PB better than me or accolade that's so much stronger than mine. But I remember not even thinking about it. I just went into the heat, which so you have a heat and then you the top two in the heats go into the final. Um, and I just thought, oh, sorry, I'm just going to try and win my heat. Because <laughs> then what's the worst thing to happen is like 
if I go for the win and I don't make the final, at least I tried. Mm. There's no point going in the heat and being scared of everyone sitting at the back of the race and kicking and, and being like, oh, only if. So I took the race on nice. um, and won the heat and was like, wow, I'm ready to go for this final. Um, and then the final was the turning point in my opinion because it was a, it was a carnage race it was so much i i'll if you haven't watched it i'll have to pop you the link <laughs> in because it was basically like three girls got dq'd it was like very jostly race okay um everyone was on the edge of their seat kind of thing because you didn't know what was going to come next um i ended up getting dq'd and reinstated three times after the race but i still got my silver medal but yeah it was i came from the back of the i think the field and you know just held on to the race and managed to get a silver medal in europe as the only person that in that field that wasn't sponsored um and wasn't a professional and it was just like you know i feel like i inspired a lot of people that were in my same shoes yeah. um and it was also like a really emotional time at that period of my life so like to have done what i'd done given everything else going on like it was just like someone was telling me to fight back you nice. know um maybe it was me but <laughs> but somebody somewhere in internally externally i don't know but it was like no this this is where you belong like mm. this is what we you can do when you really put your mind to it um and that yeah from there it just has been a roller coaster um last year i then was trying to make the olympics um so obviously it got pushed back a year which worked out perfectly in my favor um, unfortunately, I came fourth at the trials, and they take three. Came fourth by point two of a second, so like not quite your time yet. Yeah, not but yet, but I feel it's coming. Yeah, um, I learned a lot that year. It was like I I'd, I'd bitten off more than I could chew in terms of like, as we were saying, I just wanted more and more and more. Like mm. I wanted to make the Olympics. Ask me last year if I was going to have that attitude. Absolutely not. Yeah. So you, that is when I should have taken a back seat and said, "Hang on a minute, Holly. Like you know, it would be awesome to make the Olympics, but let's just think about what you've done." After that, when I didn't make the Olympics, I remember watching everybody else go and I was so harsh on myself. I was like, mm. I, I can't do this anymore. This is, it was heartbreak, you know? It was points of a second and I wasn't there. And it yeah. was just like, what if I'd done this? What if I'd done that? What could I have done differently? What if, you know, what if I'd done this race, this preparation? You know, I questioned everything. And that's when I realized how brutal and harsh the sport is because you're judged on yourself. It's the only sport where you're judged like on seconds, you know, there's no yeah. team aspect of hiding. Um, it's all about you and, and internally you hold that to yourself. So I held That's myself okay. for months. I was like, you know, so hard on myself. I should give up now. Like I tried so hard because I really deep down, I don't think I could have done much else, which is the, you know, after this half marathon, I know I could have done more, right? Yeah. But that preparation last year that I did for the Olympics, like, I, c I don't think I could have done much better maybe in some aspects but physically no i that was why that was as good as i was on the day and that will hurt but you keep growing as a person and um i stuck in the sport i signed a contract with under armor in october last year so i've still not been a pro for a year um but yeah i've just been embracing it as it goes um and I, i've loved getting involved with it but it's not everything you cut out as people thought including myself you know mm. I thought it's like once you sign it's an easy ride you looked after you know you've got a brand like money problems go away like that is not the case at all if anything the pressure elevates because yeah. of the expectations um on the yourself and also there's a little bit of hunger that is lost because you feel like you've got to where you want to go everything else is smooth sailing but wow you know I lost that little bit of drive of like making it you know um so yeah I've had when I say I've had the terrible year this year there was three big championships Commonwealth Games obviously in Birmingham should have been there there's no reason why I should not have been there uh Europeans were in Munich again should have been there um and Worlds were in Oregon and I missed all three of them just again harsh on myself I got COVID at the wrong three times this year I got COVID three times um, highly unlucky I'm also yeah. gonna say there's so many things right that I'm gonna pick I out know, and I go, know. feel right? free to intervene <laughs> because 
really okay for you to look back right now okay let's like just take this year because i'm gonna get into your mindset like obstacles because there's so much in your life that like you have navigated and you're still navigating and even the shift between where you were last year to where you are now when you said okay yeah we're talking earlier about actually understanding and being grateful for where you're at yeah also for me i mean i'm looking from the outside okay i also with my community massively talk about manifesting and just hearing your journey and really understanding like taking back to what you said when you said all right when i wanted to well there's two things okay first of all you said at 24 25 i didn't know i wanted to go pro yeah okay and i think sometimes a a lot of people can struggle because they're like i don't know what i want so how can i move forward but actually you had something and that was running and that was the thing that was fueling you and you didn't know at the time what that was going to look like or how that was going to show up but you did something and i think it's really important in terms of do something and sometimes i think we're so scared to like experiment and have a loss but had you not taken that attitude everything else wouldn't have happened or perhaps mm. not because I mean I don't yeah, have a crystal so true, ball actually yeah if I hadn't gone and asked my CEO to do any of that and I'd been you know no 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 like unless it's given to you on a plate as humans we tend to not go after it yeah you know if it's not served up it's not an option then we don't ask but you know I created my own option you know I, and I, and it took you know it took a lot for me to go into his office and sit there yeah. and go excuse me <laughs> can D- I have money yeah. can <laughs> you back me when I actually haven't quite yet got a title yeah like there's no reason yeah, yeah but I have an inclination or this is something that's fueling me and yes he equally could have said no I also a side note I have to say can we please give your manager a shout out because yeah. I'm all about powerful leaders right yeah. and I say I see oh people are not gonna like me for this but I see more managers really bugger it up and do such a have such a detrimental impact on their team emotionally physically like why people get signed off for stress and I definitely see it with my clients so I just want to shout out your manager first of all because like to have that supportive person but not just that such a proactive person to sit down with you and say hey right let's actually map this out and especially I mean I've spelt, spent 12 years in corporate, okay? So this is coming from a place of experience. I think sometimes when you need to put a business case to stu- a study together to say, hey, I want to do this. This is like all my evidence. Just having that support to be like, right, let's map that out together yeah. is yeah. so important. So um, Honestly, yeah. Like after Europeans, I sh- I had an interview because obviously the, the carnage of the DQ and the silver medal and, and they were so interested in my story as well. And that's mm. what I was really interested about with you know, afterwards I had a couple of clips with BBC and they were talking about, you know, your story and who you are and like your personality caught the public. And I just thought, yeah, that's about the journey. That's not about the performance. But I shouted out Cycle Pharmaceuticals, my company in Cambridge, I'll forever love. Um, oh. But they also like, I know that door is always open as well. And thinking about it, you know, the sponsorship they gave me and the support that they gave me was way stronger than actually signing with with a with a pro team like Under Armour. I love Under Armour. I, I love them, <laughs> but it's a different mindset because you have an expectation to perform. Whereas everything that I did for Cycle was a bonus. They, you know, they loved everything. Like they were yeah. so behind. I'd come into the office and you know they'd be like, "Well done," and like you know they'd they'd all get behind me. And that kind of support was was massive. And mm. yeah, any companies you know i'd encourage if somebody has got a dream like regardless how small it is let them do it if if you can facilitate it and it's not going to cause too much disturbance let them do it because you will f- i think they they did that for me and i mm. messaged all of them i said you changed my life like you were the ones that said yes and yeah. that has led to this medal that has led to me being a pro and Massively. they can then go home and like yes they're making money for their company and they're, you know, getting the business operations done. But also as a human being, they elevated a human. And like that is something that they will live with. And I'm so proud and I'd, I hopefully I'm in their lives forever. And I know they still follow along. So, yeah, I know it's it, companies like doing that for somebody is just I will hopefully be in the position to do that for somebody else one day is what I hope. So I yeah. love that. Right. Because it's such an important piece around one company's having and I, I think there's a lot of companies that do this really really well right equally I think there's some still stuck in like the dark ages massively but really around empowering people and actually when you have that human element and that human connection your people will want to do anything for you like as a business as a company yeah. because 
it's an investment in each other on an yeah. emotional level. And as humans, we want to feel connection. Like that's what we're driven by, whether it's home, whether it's work, whether it's personal, whether it's in sport, whatever it is. So I felt like that was just so important, right? Because I think that, and we'll talk about this a bit more, but I guess I really want to, there's two things I really massively I'm like dying <laughs> so to much. ask. Yeah, no. I'm like, how much can I pack into an episode with Holly? Like, how much are our listeners on this ride with us? Are they gonna be like, like, no, you guys, you're taking this everywhere. This convo is going everywhere, okay? However, I feel the the company piece and the cultural piece is so important and I am really about obviously communication and I think that the crux I see of like where things go wrong on a company level, on a business level with your team with your stakeholders, internal or external, is not just a lack of communication, but it's like the miscommunication, the not willing to see each other and things being so personal. So I think that the support you had at that moment, and it's that it's that just that one person being able to believe in you yep. when maybe you're on shaky ground as Correct. well. Yes. So the fact I have no doubt, right, that you're gonna this is you're gonna pay this back in some way in the future in terms yeah. of for somebody else. But the other thing that I really wanted to to ask you that like massively stands out right is and I guess at that moment as well that you didn't have the back in right mm -hmm. so it was you back in yourself yeah you've going out with somebody who's pro so I think there's an element there of you being able to see something being possible okay yeah. Yeah. and I talk about this a lot because I think well depends who's new around here okay people who would have heard me say like it took me my whole entire life to be an entrepreneur right yeah I had to go full circle and I had to learn my lessons. But it's also because it was something I, n I never saw. Mm. So I couldn't fathom like how to do it. Your inspiration. Like, yeah. 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 So I think that's really important. But think, looking at your mindset, okay, like I'm intrigued. <laughs> so yeah, okay, we've got obstacles, we've got challenges. We are going to get into them and especially around the pressure and the expectations. But mm. when you look back at the 18-year-old you mm -hmm. or even the 10-year-old you yeah. and you think about your mindset, is it something that you can look at now and think like you really trained it and maybe you have in later years but actually looking as a kid or a late teenager especially when you got on that plane to texas yeah like what was your mindset like and how have you trained it to kind of like put it into an optimum position for you to be at the top of your game um you know like it's a weird one that because i think I've always felt like in my in my class or with my peers or whatever, I've always felt like I first got into running from a cross country race when, back when you used to be able to run out the estate. It, they wouldn't let you do that now, but no you know, way. you know, a couple of people would stop off and have a fag kind of thing. But I was always the one that wanted to beat the boys. Like mm. I was always the one that kind of like uh, I did the paper round before work and after, up uh, before school and after school. I did the Saturday job. I did. I did. I always I felt like I was always doing more than what was expected not by choice like not by my mum or dad like it was by choice mm. I don't know I was always wanting to get involved in things wanting to make money wanting to be the best like it was never enough like racing and coming second as a junior in the area I was always first obviously at national level I wasn't but I always wanted to get there and I think I never let go as a junior um, and that's why I put myself in these crazy situations. Sometimes I don't even think about it. I just say, yep, I'm going to do it. I don't even think about the next bit. Yep, I'm going to come down <laughs> to Jack Di Life London. I don't care. <laughs> like, I'm just going <laughs> to see what happens. Yeah. Um, and I've always been like that. And it's always been about stretching. I always like to get out of my comfort zone, like get into the depths of the trenches and see how to get out of it. Um, I don't know why. <laughs> Sometimes I question myself on it. So like, w wish I had a quiet life and <laughs> just kind of had a thing. I can resonate with that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cause you choose this, you know, you yeah. choose this. And you know, um, I think it's just something inside me that just, I'm not quite done what I wanted to do yet. I'm not quite there. I don't know where that's gonna go. I don't know where still in five years where I'll be. I know it won't be here. I yeah. still things I want to achieve and I still don't know because it is the world is your oyster and like I could be a CEO of you know the British athletics or I could mm. be presenting I don't know those are things that I would love to explore and just because it feels so far away right now it doesn't mean that you can't get there because five years ago this felt so far away so I think as a junior yeah I've always just whatever's been handed to me I just want to do the best at it 
not saying I am the best. I struggled in a lot of areas in school and academics, but one thing I've never struggled on is saying yes and just doing things, just getting it done, you know? Um, so yeah, I think as a junior, yeah, that would be just something in me that just, you know, I feel like you've got it or you haven't. And over my peers, I just don't know why mentally I just felt like, like I was a stronger character, not educational wise or money wise or you can own it you don't have to right. justify it you're no, here no, like you no, get I to know. be like your yeah. true self <laughs> there's nothing you can say that is off limits right but yeah. I think the thing I was going to say that you've already picked up on is it really sounds like that fire in your belly as I describe it or like that heat or that like I'm gonna do this whatever this is yeah. I'm here for it yeah. it's so innate in you yeah. and I do think that I'm a really big believer as well in honouring like who we all are and that if somebody doesn't have that, that's okay because Correct. you have a yeah. different path and there's something right. different that's going to honour the way that you feel within yourself. So it isn't about everyone needs that, but I think it is also, yeah, that's part of you standing in your power to be like, mm -hmm. that's the thing that spurs me on. I mean, you're talking to me and you and I have like similarities. So yeah. I'm like, okay, yeah, I can resonate. Yeah. So, but also the other thing that really stands out for me that I, I think such an important message for people listening is Yes, you've said yes, and yes, you've like got out of your comfort zone, but it hasn't been about having a whole entire plan, no. and it hasn't been about knowing. And uh, going back to manifesting, it's probably because I've just run a workshop on manifesting that I'm really <laughs> focusing on it, okay? This wasn't my intention, but you have created space in your life for opportunities to come and to happen. Yeah. Now, I have to back that up, right, because it isn't about you not taking action. And exactly when you said people turned around and said, oh, you're so lucky, like work yeah. sponsored. You're like, mm -mm, no, I sat and I had the awkward conversation. Yep. I spent time with my manager to draw up the business case. I also worked like crazy hours to make the time zone then work. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's really important. And it isn't about one or the other, but yeah. the thing I think is so inspiring is yes, you do say yes. You say yes when it scares you. And yeah. I think people may when they look at like your accolades and how far you've come in such a what well, i'm gonna say short space of time as well looking might not feel it looking on the outside <laughs> yeah. in right yeah. but also when you say whether you stood up in front of your ceo but even we'll talk about this year and you know when you say i should have been there mm -hmm. i can still hear like the element where you are still being critical and harsh on yourself yeah, yeah. and yeah. the expectation mm -hmm. But you've also allowed yourself to create space and not have to figure it all out. And I no. think that's important. Yeah, no, I totally agree. So obviously this year was making the teams, you know, it's my job. As, a, as anybody in an industry, you have presentations due, you have meetings, you have deadlines, right? In the running world, my job was to make those teams in my mm. in my heart. It was yeah. to and I failed. I failed my job. Like you, it was worth the sack, you know? That's how I saw it. Um, but it's taken me this whole year to actually figure out that it wasn't, it's about like, obviously I had COVID and it's about fighting back and it's about elevating the other areas, you know. It's about figuring out what went wrong and how to fix it. And um, one of those things that, you know, hopefully we do touch on as well, it's, it's about the people. The One of the big reasons why I went wrong this year is when, when it did go wrong, Yeah. I had no one to fall back on. So when I'd signed with Under Armour, I, I signed myself with this group in this location with this team. Um, and I come away from everything I knew and mm. went to this whole new place. And like when it went wrong, I felt like I was abandoned. I felt like I was isolated and I felt like I had to put it right on my own. Um, what does it look like for you when you have those people around you? Like not as in you need to give an, a name out, a shout out to the mm -hmm. people around you, but like when you feel supported and you've got what I'm going to put in quotation marks, if you watch it, you can see me do it, right? But the right people around you what does that look like and feel like for you where you feel supported yeah you just you feel belief is is the the num number one thing and when you've got people around you you feel that th you're meant to be there and you don't question anything like when you're not around the right people you're questioning mm. so that's the biggest thing i think if you're sitting there thinking should i do this should i do this the right people are right behind you saying hell yeah like, let's go, let's do this, I'll I'll do it with you. You know, that is the different attitude in just one thing, a person. So one person can change your life, really, the right people. And I was in the wrong group with no one filling me up. I didn't feel full. I didn't mm. feel like I was there. I didn't feel like I had a pur purpose. I didn't feel useful. I thought, you know, maybe I'm too old for this. And I started questioning everything, you yeah. know. 
and then I've come away from it. I've come home to back to London. I've been training with different people. I've been back with my best friend, training with her, and she's just filled me up. And she's gone, hell no, you are, you are so talented. You are. She, uh, she's. I mean, she was with me in IB for and saw what I did. So she <laughs> was like, Christ, girl, like <laughs> you've got so much more to give. And like, yeah. just how she believed in me and how much I feel like I'm helping her as well. Like we fill each other up and we bounce Love off each that. other. Um, and just been being around her for the last like two months, like me getting on training and helping her. She had the, I put on a race just for her. She broke two minutes in the 800 and it was like incredible. And it was like, we did that together. Like yeah. without me, she wouldn't have been able to do that. But then without her, I wouldn't be able to have been fight back and say, well, yeah, I'm staying in the sport. Um, Cause this summer I decided like, okay, I'm gonna be done. I'm gonna stay in the city and I'm just gonna work. And she was like, no, you're not. Like, you're you're not done. And once I started training with her and getting my mojo back and feeling full mm. with the right people around me, I was like, no, you're right. Like, I'm not done. Like, I belong here. Like, even if it's not from a performance outlet, I'm here for inspiration. I'm here to keep fighting, to show people to, you know, don't give up. Like, to communicate, be transparent, you know, in this world. Like, it's not as it seems we're not you know we don't go to bed at eight o'clock all the time you know yeah. i want to communicate i want people to see my personality and and be like damn she's cool i want to be like that i can be like that you know so i mean i can say just alone from our track life london community <laughs> like you walk in and literally people are in awe okay oh, so like yeah. the next time the self-doubt creeps in and you're, yeah. you're questioning yeah. i'm just going to give you a reminder of that okay that's a small small snippet but i think I think what people will massively appreciate and perhaps be surprised at is where your self-doubt like has showed up and continues to show up. And again, it goes back to when I really say like, it's not about us trying to get rid of it. It's really understanding like where it comes from, where it creeps in, when it gets a little bit too loud and what you do about it, right? And I think you describing the people around you, I, mean, I talk about energy a lot, okay? Yeah. So like that energy exchange. Oh, yeah, yeah. When you so find important. that right energy, you can do anything. And it's so powerful. So like any, like I was in such a bad place, obviously these last eight months in terms of, you know, uh, it, it, some, it's just something, so something wasn't right. You know, when you're mm. in your life and you're kind of going through the motions and you're not in control, but you're just going through the motions because you feel like that's what you've meant to do. And I was doing the best I possibly could at being a pro, yeah. but I was in the wrong location with the wrong people. And that's it. It's not the brand. It was not the idea. It was not the, it was they weren't filling me up and I had no mojo. I've come out of it and like that small thing of like bouncing off energy has just, I feel like, no, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna run the, my fastest ever times next year and it's gonna take a hell of a lot to stop me because if I have that person there, I feel like I can do anything. Um, so I'm here for the ride. Yeah, I'm she, so here to yeah. see it and I can't wait. But also yeah. I think the other thing is that you had to go through those challenges and I think I mean maybe it's just because I'm so I feel like I'm so in the athletics world as in like I know about it I've seen my brother train so yep. I guess maybe I'm a little bit more visible in terms of like the highs and lows and I really see those lows and like yeah. just watching sometimes I feel so invested I'm like Amira it's not you going through it but <laughs> yeah. I'm a massive empath okay yeah. so I can pick it up yeah. but I think as well the key thing was yes okay fine you haven't done what you wanted to this year where you thought you were gonna go mm. but you really needed to learn those lessons mm -hmm. and I think had had you gone to each of those races and performed the way you wanted to this next chapter wouldn't be happening whatever that Very is true. and whatever it's gonna Very bring true. yeah and yeah. I think you realigning as well like your support system was c what, what it sounds like to me yeah. <laughs> I'm like I'm narrating on your yeah. life but yeah. sounds like it was an important piece of the puzzle for you mm -hmm. and I guess one thing that like we haven't touched on right because we've really really looked at like who you are as a person like your mindset your tenacity your resilience okay and how you actually perform as like an optimum athlete but what about like you on a personal level in your personal life like how does life fit in with this or like how does this fit around life even you can throw this question out however you want yeah, right because yeah. yes we've talked about IB for as a really good example okay and you start into say wait I can do both right mm -hmm. but what about when it comes down to romantic relationships and your yeah. social aspect what does yeah. that look like so I, I obviously used to be in a you know really good relationship with a guy in the sport who you know taught me everything I knew and you know I owe a lot to that person mm. um however when he started getting really really good at the sport um he you know 
girls are attracted to any well anyone is attracted to anyone that's successful right um so unfortunately yep. <laughs> um you know right when you know things were started picking up for me which was january 2021 three two months before i won the medal so you know things were really starting to go well um you know yeah he broke it off and and you know straight into another relationship after you know what seemed like a perfect you know few years together there was no there was nothing I could see that went wrong and even he to this day has no reason for the breakup like um so it was really 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 hard to have a private life and a relationship in a sport where somebody else is extremely successful at the same sport because you cannot go anywhere you can't go everything social media outlet um he's breaking records he's doing so well but also he's you know ended a relationship with you in 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 a horrible way and you know I'm d- I don't want to get down into the details of what mm. happened and stuff but all I can say is like I was really really hurt for a long time um and How do you navigate that hurt when you still on and like from a job perspective from a professional mm. point of view from like the world looking in you still have to mm. get up and perform and train like how do you navigate the hurt because okay i'm gonna go through like our typical heartbreak all right when we hit those low moments and it's that painful yeah. which i'm gonna say heartbreak is and yeah. I, i'm a believer that we all need it at least once in our life i'm telling you <laughs> the lessons we learn from yeah. it like it's, no, it's true you can't come back from it until you really hit that deep point mm-hmm. But how was it navigating that hurt? Maybe it sounds like as well like confusion because mm-hmm. it's like, right, this has kind of come out a little bit of out of the blue. Yeah. And still having to perform, especially as you've said already, like your job is to perform. Yeah. And there's expectations. Yeah. How did you manage like both at the same time? So back at that time, I wasn't pro, right? That was before I turned pro. So it was a little easier, but I was working full time and I'd asked my company to you know fund me so Mm. you know I wanted to make sure I was still performing but actually without the running I think it would have been way worse so it was about just getting up and actually just taking care of the running um that's what saved me in a way because without that I don't know what I would have done um I was isolated I was in on I'd gone to a camp where he was and which is where we broke up so you know I never met these people and these this is the girl who's now my best friend who I went to Ibiza with. So that's the first time I ever met her. And I just literally was like, hi, oh, by the way, I'm going through a breakup and bawled my eyes out and mm. was a complete carnage wreck. So I have no idea why <laughs> she's still my best friend. But no, I think she saw me at my most vulnerable and saw me fight back. Um, and I think that's where my character, that's how I got through it was I'm at my lowest. I've been like, I felt no self-worth because of, the actions that were going on behind my back Mm. um and I just thought you know what have I done to deserve this like why or now and the fact the only way I could get my way out of it was I'm gonna go I'm gonna make this GB team and I'm gonna do the best I can do and that was ended up being a medal um which I'm gonna highlight I got a medal way before him and he's been (laughs) pro for five years so (laughs) (laughs) you know it took a lot of anger and fight to to get on that start line Mm. but that's what made that was what makes me me right so I'm glad it all happened um and it made me realize what I can do like at your lowest yeah um how bad you can fight and you know but in terms of navigating it was just about getting up every day and getting the running done everything else was get through it you know sleep didn't happen food tried to eat mm. but you know at main that's hard with a heartbreak yeah like it is hard when yeah. you physically feel sick to you. well yeah i'm gonna say from experience like you physically feel sick to your stomach but yeah. for other people it can come out in different oh, ways yeah, but your body I, feels it yeah i couldn't i couldn't sleep i was i couldn't eat um i lost so much weight which then was a worry for my sport so i was just like oh my god I'm losing muscle um everything so like intrinsically linked like yeah. one thing to yeah. another i couldn't go out in social settings like for more than like an hour i'd get like nervous i'd need to go back home you know mm. I'd, I'd get like i need to go home and cry you know it was it was just a really 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 awful time and it was my best friend had left me out to dry and the way the breakup happened you know it went on for months because he kept me dangling you know he ke- fueled me hope um and obviously years later i found out the whole time he was you know messaging and with other girls sleeping with other girls and the whole time giving me hope um which i didn't know about and there's me being 
loyal and I'm just going to crack on with my sport and not see any other girl. And I tried texting other guy, but that's not me. It mm. wasn't me. And I just cracked on and did what I did. Um, but yeah, it's been it. It's been a hard year because I had to see him succeed and be quite frankly an asshole um, at the same time. And I'm trying to do what he's doing, knowing what he's done. Mm. So it's just, yeah, it's it's been tough because I've wanted to leave the sport so many times because I felt like it's his. He's he was there first. He was a pro wow. first. He's doing better than me. He's he made the Olympics. He. He's do he's up here, I'm down here. Like, you know, that's how I kept viewing myself, you know. He broke up. What about now? How do you view it now? Because <laughs> Yeah. I'm interested to hear and I feel like you might still be on the journey. Yeah, oh I'm hundred percent I think you'll always be on the journey, but no, I think I'm i I'm probably neck and neck. In turn it's weird. Athletically he's performing, yeah, top two, three in his area yeah. i'm not quite there so you know like that's how i view it if you look at it statistically or factually mm. he's doing better which is that's the thing with runner there's running is there's times and there's placing to put you in a box right yeah. i'm not in the quota he's higher up in that box which is what i'm striving to be mm. but as a human being and the things that i do around the sport and the people that i like putting on a race for my best friend to make sure she broke too like when there was no other races available you know going and doing this Copenhagen race when somebody had a drop out like the things that I do for the sport in other areas I feel like I'm on different wavelengths to him you know and the way I conducted myself um given everything going on I think was way more beneficial for healing and I don't think he'll ever get over me. And I thought for the longest time it was me that would never get over him. Mm. But he went straight on to rep with girls that, you know, are quite frankly, like mim mimics of me to hide it. Whereas I let myself heal, even though it's been very, very difficult because to heal, you need to come away. And I haven't been able to come away from the sport because I want to succeed. So, you know, it's constantly, we're constantly butting heads. Um, I think yeah. as well, though, as you said, that is a really difficult situation because I am a big believer that like when things get tough or you really start to realize like your relationship patterns where they keep recurring or something is really difficult, that space is a really big healer. Time also, but it's about like giving yourself the space to actually like look inwards, to really take ownership and say, okay, cool. How am I gonna look at this differently, right? Yeah. Because they always say it's not, what happened it's the way that you perceive it and it's actually and that takes time especially when you come from initially what it feels like was confusion right yeah. it was surprise it was shock your worlds are so intrinsically linked you don't get to just get up and go unless you're willing to actually say hey i'm leaving the sport mm -hmm. which it sounds like you're very far away from doing which i'm here for right? well <laughs> <laughs> recently yeah i've been, been yo-yoing with it but yeah like obviously this summer was you know like you probably didn't see it but track life london during that phase i was like you know i'm I'm done with the running i'm gonna do other things that's what i was kind of searching for myself and thinking okay like you need to come away from this now like it, enough's enough you've been through enough mm. pain you know you've not you know you've been through heartbreak he's in the sport you've missed all these teams just come away from it go back into the corporate world um but obviously i didn't want to do that i just needed my person or somebody to look at me and go holly stay you're you're right where you need to be fight back keep fighting you know like and that it took for somebody to like my best friend like T taryn for her to say that to me or you know it, it's a lot because she truly wants the best for me and there's rare that is so rare that somebody you know will actually mm. really everyone's about themselves which is good you need to be in this world to make it but that kind of honesty and like how i felt when she said it, it was like yeah she does i do belong in the sport i'm gonna stay there and I had him for so long and that's the support we all need as human beings like having a relationship it's not about having a relationship it's about you know when things go wrong somebody to a safety net it's yeah. um someone to bounce off of it's like a future with it's uh saving for a mortgage with it's like all of these things that make you feel good for the future you know make you feel like you're on the right path when things are going wrong it's like it doesn't matter because we're going on holiday next month or it doesn't matter because we're saving for a house and mm. uh, you know it doesn't matter because we're going to get married like that's how my life's going to be when that's taken away you could go anywhere and it's scary right it's where are you going to 
end up like and that's what scared me the most for the longest time but I think I found my love in my best friend so I was like you know for the next year I'm gonna stick by her side because she's given me the energy that I was getting from the relationship right so that love and that energy that he once gave me about reaching my dreams and wanting to aspire to be like him like that meant so much to me like Mm. it was more about the it was more about that like that's why I loved him so much was he he made me that person that wants to fight for more I've just found that in like having a really close friend that has gone what makes me want to fight more so it's like I'm gonna go to California with her (laughs) and train with her we've got plans for the next three months around training and goals and how I'm gonna reach them and it's together it's with her and she needs it as much as me as well um because I think in the sport you you need somebody else you can't you can't go home every day after having a really really tough track session and go to bed with on your own like sometimes it's nice to be like yeah we done this like fuel each other let's go again yeah. tomorrow and that support system right but right. one thing I'm gonna change before I ask you like the last question which I feel like you've led into so beautifully yeah. is even when you look back at it and you say you know like he made me want to fight and things like that and he mm-hmm. fueled me mm-hmm. I actually think that you already have that within you and someone yes enhances it, it. Yeah. yeah and I think that helps and we all need that connection and that person or those people but I also am a big believer that everyone walks into your life for a reason mm-hmm. and I feel that probably in a few years time you'll look back at this chapter yeah and look at it really differently I hope so I hope so I hope I look at it and I, I I'm gonna keep a positive outlet on him even though everything that's gone on I'm gonna be the bigger person but yeah at the end of the day he walked into my life took me out of a corporate job and put me in a professional situation and all I can say is thank you to him for that yes. and I appreciate it and um show him how it's done because <laughs> he's had a lot longer in it than me and I and I'm s- I feel like you know I'm taking a different approach on it um but I I struggled so much with seeing him everywhere and I guess now it's payback you know it's kind of like you you're now going to watch me from the sidelines and have that kind of attitude not as a revenge aspect but as an aspect of like you're I gonna thrive for you yeah, yeah right you're not yeah. thriving for him exactly right? exactly so I guess like my last question is what is next for you? Um, yeah, so obviously my life's been a roller coaster. So th- this summer I decided, you know, maybe pack it in and then my friend come and visit and, and you know, I've done this half marathon and things have ca- turned around again. And this is life, right? One minute you're down, one minute you're up. You just need to roll with it. So I'm going to, obviously I'm with Under Armour still. I'm a professional contract with them, but the setup and the situation hasn't worked. So I need to I need to look at that and realize don't go back into it. So I'm not going to go back into that situation with that coaching and that group. I'm going to come out of it. And what has worked is like training with my best friend, pushing each other. She's a phenomenal athlete. She's ran faster times than me. So like put yourself with people that are going to push you. Um, And I push her so we can work together to reach our goals. And I'm that's what I'm going to do for the next three months is, you know, travel with her, race with her have goals with her, um, reach as high as possible, and knowing that like we've, we're, we're there for each other no matter what. So if it goes wrong, it's fine. We're going to pick each other up. Um, whereas before, I was kind of doing everything on my own. Um, this is just how we're going to do it. Instead of being that power power female male couple, <laughs> we're going to be that power best friend couple. I love um, that. And like, yeah, we see ourselves hopefully making the teams next year, the world team in, in Budapest together. And if we cross the line together, that's that's – that would be the cherry on the cake. So um, I'm just going to say that you manifested it here first, okay? Yeah, so yeah. when you both <laughs> cross that line together, yeah. I am going to be screaming at my TV, yeah, okay? I just hope so. so you know. Yeah. Holly, like it's been an absolute pleasure and I feel that there is so many so many questions still that I haven't asked you. So yep. if you're open, we will come back and we will do part two, right? Yeah. <laughs> but before I let yeah. you go, there's three questions. Okay. Sometimes three, sometimes four. I mix them up. Um, that I always love to ask my guests to kind of sum up a episode as well okay so first question is what is a quote that you want to leave our audience with or a piece of food for thought that is going to really make them think um i think based upon today or everything we've talked about today i think it's about kind of like not being as scared to try so one of the quotes that you know i always think back to when i think am i doing should i be doing this like Mm. am i good enough should I keep striving to do this? Should I stop? 
like that's what I thought constantly this summer and I think the biggest thing to remind yourself or a quote is you know actually failing is not even trying so at least I tried at least I rolled the dice and signed with Under Armour at least I went out with that team and learned at least I failed and didn't make all of those three teams um because at the end of the day I tried to do every single one and I tried and I could have just given up and I wanted to give up this summer and again my friend has gone no we're trying again we're going to roll the dice and do something different so failure in your own life is about not trying so get on the start line and try and then you can say you you can summarize (laughs) it but (laughs) it's way worse to just give up um regardless like take the pain and take the failure after trying because then it's so more like you tried you know no yeah you know then if it's for you or if it's not yeah okay so second question what is like a practical tip that you want to leave our audience with it can be a running tip if you want a practical like a life tip life tip yeah um i'm a big you implement yeah i'm a big i'm a big note i'm a big like a task note writer yeah me too um (laughs) you know we get to bed at the end of the day and you know if i haven't done at least three things on my tick list i feel like I've, i've failed but you know Just write three things down and do those things that are for yourself, whether that's pluck your eyebrows, which I always forget to do. And I'm like, (laughs) God's sake, I'm laying in bed, scrolling Instagram, like, or, you know, do a plank for two minutes or like normally those are on my list is like plank, um, get my run done and, you know, do a bit of self care for an hour before bed. You know, you can do those within 30 minutes, like give yourself 30 minutes and get it done in the morning if that's how you work best or if you've got half an hour before bed just do three things for you love that okay last but not least your favorite book or a book that you love that's helped you grow and you want to share with our beautiful listeners yep so mine obviously as an athlete i'm going to share a sports book oh please Uh, do (laughs) so it's by uh pat fitzgerald and it's um it's called how bad do you want it nice um and it's very much short stories about athletes runners particularly and how the mental side has it's all about how bad do you want something it comes down to those naught points of a second that comes down to your personality and your intrinsic hunger so you can all have the same lungs the same legs right but if you're sprinting for that last 100 meters which we, you know as track line like you know how hard it is <laughs> yes. it comes down to the mindset that one click that goes how bad do you want it can you go again can you go again bouncing back um in the really situations where you know you're most vulnerable you're most down um so that it's a really good book about you know if you can take someone by an inch in a race do it get in the head you know if you're running against side them and you're sitting by don't go in front of them do the small things that like will really empower your mental side and get you stronger mentally um so yeah it's a brilliant book and i read it before some races as well just to like fire me up to be like yeah like you know you've got to be put yourself out there and it's about how strong you can be mentally rather than physically so i'm taking that away okay yeah (laughs) yes i needed to hear that today (laughs) holly honestly it's been an absolute pleasure thank you for being so open yeah. and so willing to be here no thank you for having me i'm sorry if we've overrun <laughs> like so far but no it's been great um yeah look forward to the next one <laughs>